finish a, a bowl or did she yes. not get picked up? She just finished a bowl. Okay, so I need to get her to me. Yeah. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create. How's everybody doing? We're working on page two of Stamperia. Oh, I forgot the name of this collection. Here we go. Stamperia what? Stamperia. Doesn't say. Christmas collection. Generic. Christmas greetings. Okay, let's start that again. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page two of Christmas Greetings, it's Stamperia collection, and uh, this album is uh, eight and a half by ten and a half, and um, the pocket pages themselves or the signatures are eight by ten. Okay, so let's get started. So I've chosen this this print, which is from I'm using both a uh, two twelve by twelves of the collection pack or the uh, scrapbook pack, and one of the backgrounds pack. I'm sorry, two of each. Both of them are 12 by 12. And this is from the scrapbook pad. Now we, you're going to do two, um, two flaps. They are going to be five and a quarter, five and a quarter by eight inches tall. You're going to score a half inch on the five and a quarter inch side. You're going to do that twice, once for the left and once for the right. Okay, set those aside. Now, um, what I decided to do was inset those flaps just a little bit. Um, when the larger you go on the book, the, the more important it is um, to make sure that there's no page interference. It's not completely clear to me why that becomes a bigger issue as you get larger, and it could just be because there's a little more room for the pages to torque. So I'm going to inset that a little bit so the hinges aren't right next to um, the interior spine. Actually, it'll be on this side. So I've created two strips. These are both a quarter inch. We're going to go left and right. And it's part of this continuous pattern. So once I lay this in, I'm going to add my flap and it's going to be abutted right next to it. And you can see there's a continuous pattern. <clears throat> I have to ink it. So I'll leave these two strips in first and then we'll come back and add the um, the flaps. Sorry. I don't know what's going on here. So um, some of you have may have noticed that I am not uh, producing at the rate that I usually do, which is a couple of months. It's the last couple of months. It's been one a month. Um, just really having trouble with, uh, I guess, motivation. And then also my hands have really been bothering me. So I've been giving them more time to rest. Um, I, my arthritis uh, on both hands has been really troublesome lately. So I've changed some things, hoping that it's going to help with my inflammation. We'll see. But I got to, you know, these are the only two I get. So I'm trying to take care of them. And then also, Julie has been busy, you know, trying to um, pull in some additional designers. And I know you guys are enjoying um, Christine Wood's albums, um, as do I. And I'm sure it's nice to see something different once in a while. Um, because with all designers, you can definitely, you know, over time start to pick out, oh, that's a, that was designed by so-and-so or this was designed by so-and-so. Um, everybody has sort of a unique signature. Whether they know it or not, it starts to um, emerge over time. And since I've been doing this, and since I've been doing this for over four years, it's it's pretty hard to keep coming up with, you know, new ideas. So I think I do have a pretty set style that's pretty easily identifiable. Oh, good grief. I think more so with Graphic 45 collections than Stamperias because I've actually done more, more uh, graphic projects than anything else. There we go. Now it's flowing. Where I thought it was. There must be something stuck in there. Okay, I think I've got enough to get this down. Make sure it's right side up. And yes, it is. That's page one. Just a bit. 
Stuck on the tip. I think after I get my flaps in, I'll take a break and go wash my tip out. Been a, it doesn't usually clog on me because I craft so frequently, but lately I've been taking long breaks. So, okay, there we go like to hold one edge down, kind of use it as a pivot point. There we go, it's a little high. <clears throat> okay, so the next thing we'll do is add our flaps. Okay, so what I want to happen here is I want my flaps to join in the middle. I've went ahead and used my Tim Holtz ruler and found my center point which because this is 10 inches wide is at 5 inches. So I'm going to dry fit this first so it looks like this is going to overlap slightly on the quarter inch. Not much, just ever so slightly on both sides. Okay. So I am going to apply this corner right to that mark. I'm actually going to turn it so I can see both the top and bottom. And I'm going to take some of these inserts out to flatten it. There we go. I want to see this side and this side to make sure they're both flush and not extending past uh, the signature itself. Okay, there's one. So they just meet in the middle. Now we're going to hold this together with a design element on top. So this piece <clears throat> is 11 and a half, 11 and a half. by four, I'm sorry, by three and seven eighths. Oh, why did I say five and three quarters? That's weird. Eleven and a half. Oh, that's the score. Score at five and three quarters. So eleven and a half score at check that. Score at five and three quarters, and it is three and seven eighths inch wide. Three and seven eighths inch wide. And that's gonna get attached to one of these two panels and it'll have a magnet on the other side. So go ahead and cut that and set it aside. And then this is the uh, design element that I've chosen to go on top of it. And we have two because I'm using two packs of everything. So this will be what's on the inside. Okay, now back to the flap design. We'll go ahead and lay these out. I'm gonna dry fit real quick. I'm not gonna put this one down because this is, let me think about that. This is page two, so the spine is over here. So yeah, I'm gonna put the magnet here. So there's gonna be a magnet here and a magnet here to close like that. So let's go ahead and add that magnet while it is uncovered. The connection between my brain and my fingers is broken <laughs> because I tell my hands to do something and my it's not happening. 
so frustrating. <clears throat> So there's magnets on the other side, so all the reason I flipped it over is because I want it to be the polar opposite of the one down here, so it's not drawn to it. <clears throat> okay, this is going to go here, and then where's my other piece? <clears throat> here it is. This will go here. And I'm just dry fitting. It looks like everything's going to fit just fine. Pencil mark. Okay, just to recap, <clears throat> these two uh, slivers on either side are quarter inch, and the panels are, panels, I mean the flaps, are five and a quarter by eight, five and a quarter by eight, you're going to need two of those, left and right, and then you're going to find your center mark, marry these two up in the middle, I'm going to cover them. Okay, that's where we're at right now. And I'm just going to pull out a straight pin here to see if I can get this flow going. So it would be nice to get this page done before I have to stop and clean the tip. Okay, I went ahead and inked the edges. I'm using a brown uh, called Chocolate Malt. And that's Powder Puff. It's available in our shop at www.scrapandcreate.com. <laughs> I'm going to slide this under so I can... Uh, oops. This one goes here, sorry. I just noticed. Um, they they go together and this I had them left and right mixed up. Let's get some more on here. So you can slide it around a little bit. see there's the second half of that present. It's going to be less important once we put the card on, but Okay, so we've got a magnet there. You can put its mate on top. I'm going to decorate this while it's off and add this to the top. So it's a card and it's a it's like a tent card, so it folds on the top. You can change the orientation if you want, it's not significant. That's just what I decided to do. course the measurement is based on the card itself. So this is the inside and it is just simply the reverse of the card. It's going to go on the bottom. I'm going to put a decorative piece on this side. I just don't know what yet. Well now it's really flowing. Nice. But this is such a distinctive um, image I didn't want to use it twice. So we use the flip side. That's the beauty of having two packs. You get to use both sides. Okay. Now this is going to go like so. So that means I also need to decorate half of this. Um, half of it is going to be exposed when we open it. Okay. 
so the original magnets right here this is going to be the magnet on the card and we'll want to have that covered so I am going to mark the middle on it because I'm I want it centered <clears throat> there. Okay, and that is, I need a, a band here that's about two and a quarter. So I want to think about that for a second because whatever I choose, I want it to coordinate with what's inside. <clears throat> so it's going to look like that. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back uh, after I've got my inside papers ready to go and I will uh, know what I'm going to put on the top half of this as well as how we're going to decorate the back of it. Be back shortly. All right, everyone. So I have placed the magnet here. I'm going to show you what I did real quick. And I picked out my pattern for the back of this. So I had a magnet here as my marker. And um, I had adhesive on top of it. So I placed the card where I want it and just pressed this into place. And then I picked up my magnet. So that's in place now. Now for the back of it, I'm going, oh, I'm going to try to, hmm, maybe not. I was going to actually try to color block this, but as you can see, the magnets in between, I can't really move it. So I am going to go ahead and place these abutted and on the inside I'm using that pattern as well. So that's going to go here and this is going to go left and right. So let's go ahead and add this on this side and then we'll adhere the, um, the card to the top and um, check the magnet placement which should be fine. All of this came off one sheet uh, from the pattern pack or background pack or whatever the stamp rate calls it. I wish there was a standard, but there's not. Everybody calls it something different. Some patterns, some pattern solid, some background. Um, each one, Chabella, Stamperia, and Graphic all have slightly different naming conventions for it, for, for this. Okay, there we go. Now, it'll be easy. I just flip it over. let it find the magnet like so. So now I know I need to put some glue on this side. I'm going to burnish that up a little bit. I think that's about right. I just flipped it over to see where, where my glue line needs to be. And because the two flaps don't overlap, you have to have some sort of an extender to reach over and, as a closure. And the reason I don't put it on the base page is um, because if I have a picture or a pocket or something that's adding additional layers, um, it makes it hard for the magnet to attract. And so by definition on the inside, I expect to have pictures on both flaps as well as the back. And all of that just continues to add layers between the magnets and eventually they just don't hold. So that's why I have this extension. It's exclusive to the outside. I might add a photo on either side, but only one. So it won't be one here and one on the back side of this. So this will, for all intents and purposes, remain a single layer, and this could be a single layer with a photo. Okay, so this opens up and this opens to the left and right. Okay, let's go ahead and add these elements, ones to the left and ones to the right, and then we've got this large piece. And again, this is uh, from the same Oh, you know what? I made this too wide. I forgot that I inset this a quarter inch, so I need to trim this down just a little bit more. 
Oh, I wish I would have known that. I would have made these a little bit wider. As it stands, each one of these is an inch. But if you lay this in, this was 12 inches. If you lay it in, um, you it looks like you could add like 3 eighths of an inch to each one. No, a half inch. So a quarter inch to each one. These could both have been one and a quarter inches wide, just a little bit wider. So that's disappointing, but not, not a big deal. I just think it would have made more of a statement since this is such a large piece here. Okay, now I need to re-ink the side I trimmed. <clears throat> everything I have. Again, these are an inch, but I think you could have gone an inch and a quarter. But be sure to check your measurements before you cut your designer paper. Okay, I've got one more design decision to make, and that is to fill the back of these flaps with some sort of a contrast. So let me pick something up. I'll be right back. That way you don't have to watch me shuffle through everything. Okay, everyone, I chose this pattern, and I think it looks so elegant. Um, uh, and I tried it both ways, the this side and the flip side, so I'm going to show you the same thing I saw because I haven't decided yet. So that, it's very, it's very elegant and light and um, yeah, it reminds me of like a fancy French tea room. And then this is a little bit warmer um, and I like both. So if you're building this and you actually have some photos that you're planning on putting in it, I think I would choose my side based on the photographs. Um, I think both sides work. Again, this is from the, um, whatever they call it, backgrounds. This is from the background pack. So what do you guys think? I'm going to go with the lighter of the two, but I really like both. So that was a little bit of a tough decision. And if I had it to do again, and I definitely have leftover from the, this 12 by 12, I would have covered this in this pattern. And I still may do that. I may just cut another piece and lay it right on top, um, which is what I normally do is try to pull in the contrast for any flap that extends. I don't know why I didn't do that. I guess it's one of those things when you don't do it, or you get away from it for a little while, um, you sort of get out of the groove, so to speak. But yeah, this is beautiful. And this paper really, and the more I look at the backgrounds, the colors coordinate with the Christmas, but the background collection could be anything. Um, it's just really elegant. It does not have to be a Christmas album. The backgrounds would go, you know, they're really, and I'll show you that. Here's the background, right? There's nothing that's that screams Christmas. It just coordinates with the Christmas collection. You could use it at, you know, a different season, different events. I think it's really pretty. 
I think um, I think they're kind of getting getting the idea. A couple of years ago, when Julie and I said, "Why aren't you guys doing this?" You know, graphics making a killing because they have these backgrounds. It's not that hard, right? Um, it's not like inventing the wheel. It's just sort of taking advantage of somebody else's great idea. Anyway, the first few that they did were, they didn't have a strong image on them, but they had too much of like this patchwork, um, which I like, but I don't want all of them to look like pat patchwork. Now they're all starting to look more like, like backgrounds. And I like it. I think it's easier to layer with with that. When you have a patchwork, it's hard to add a layer to a patchwork pattern. It already looks layered. It starts to look messy. Okay, beautiful. All right, since I'm here, I am going to go ahead and... Oh, you know what? I think I might not like it. I know it would be a smaller piece, but I think, I, I think I'm going to leave it as is. Okay. And... Magnet placement caused me to put that together as opposed to have a little black strap. Now, the um, if you like the black outline, there's a way to cleverly disguise that. One is to use your ruler and run a black line down with a, sh a fat Sharpie. Um, and the other is just to cut a sliver of black paper and add it, if you like, to make it look color blocked instead of just butted together like so. Okay, that's it for page two. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. I'll be back soon with page three from Christmas Greetings. Hey, it's me again, and uh, I forgot we still need to cover this, so I'm going to use the same pattern as I used on the inside to cover the back of this card. Uh, but for the back, I think I am going to use the side. I think it pulls in this gold better. So there's my thought process on how to choose the side for this last bit. Okay. I really like this. It's very pretty. Now because I used two packs of the scrap and backgrounds, I have another sheet of this which I'm going to pull into page three since they are going to be um, in a shared open layout. And I think I'm going to use it as a background and then have um, some 4 by 4 flaps. But I haven't fully decided, but go ahead and pull that out because that's definitely going to be in uh, used on page 3. There we go. Okay, now I'm finished. <laughs> be back soon with page 3.